Alright guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we have the translations to the OPOP -OP burst that was released earlier tonight. Shout out to MediU for the translations. I appreciate you like always. Uh, but we're going to take a look at the translations, uh, see if there was anything that we missed or if there was anything that we was uh, incorrect since I was using my Google Translate app, which is not the best, especially as of late when it doesn't even want to translate half the time. But uh, but yeah, we're going to take a look at everything and see, see what's going on. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below after we take a look at everything. And of course, if you guys do enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for future content. So uh, first thing is going to be the intersecting wheels for Kadash. So Kadash is going to be getting his FR, FR boards, BT, his force level 50, and a rework. Now his uh, FR weapon revelation with his FR ability being star slash with Zande as his partner. It's a melee AoE Bray plus an HP attack. It inflicts five stacks of the debuff fixation to the target. Uh, when it comes to the FR conditions, whenever a turn passes with a character selecting a melee attack command, and the other one being whenever a turn passes with a character attacking an enemy having a stacked debuff. Okay, so yeah, very, very simple uh, FR conditions. Not hard whatsoever. <clears throat> his uh, BT weapon, Life and Death, with his BT ability, Withering Planet. It's a melee AoE Bray plus an HP attack. The BT effect to himself, the stack of fixation inflicted by self does not go down. Oh, nice. Very nice. Hey, something told me that that was going to be part of his BT effect, uh, but I wasn't sure because uh, I was talking to uh, my... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, my good buddy uh, Kaiden, who is a big, big uh, user of uh, Kadaj, and uh, we, I was kind of like throwing I uh, ideas, and I, and I do believe this was one of the ideas that fixation would not go down. Uh, the party, whenever they are attacking an enemy inflicted with five stacks of fixation, it triggers Kadaj's follow-up attack. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. So basically, you get a follow-up attack so long as you are attacking an enemy inflicted with this debuff. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, the party is also going to be getting break damage up, break damage cap up, HP damage up, and HP damage cap up. I wonder if uh, I wonder if the uh, the trap. Uh, it, it, I mean, would you count? I mean, technically, it is like a trap, kind of. Um, yeah, I wonder if it if that's going to be messed with. Like, I wonder if they're going to add like more HP dumps to to the. Uh, to that uh, follow-up attack. I I'm curious to see how that's going to work out. Uh, next up, we got the Memorial Battle, which is a brand new content that is going to be dropping in JP. So Stage 1 starts on the 24th of this month. Powerful bosses from each series who appeared within the story are faced here, but much stronger ca uh, characters that share the series with the boss will grant synergy to the party, just like how BT Weapon slash Passive grants synergy to the party in FEOD, -E so example, FFA characters ver versus Junction uh, Griever. In this battle, players can use multiple parties to challenge the bosses, aka uh, to boss rush, but without the turn limit. Uh, when changing from one party to the next, the first party will be locked and cannot be changed back to, uh, cannot be cannot be changed back to again. At certain HP thresholds, the boss attack pattern and gimmick will change, and players are advised to change to the party that can deal with that change. Okay, I, li I like that. I like that a lot, actually. It it's almost like uh, like HP gates. Like, you can't bring your most busted characters within, like, the first party. It's like you actually have to strategize uh, a little bit here. Uh, when changing between parties, the FR gauge and HP damage bonus will remain the same. The FR gauge and the HP damage bonus will remain the same. Okay, so what's going to happen with, uh, like, what's... Okay, now now I'm starting to question things. Because, like, if the FR gauge and the HP damage bonus will remain the same, so let's say if it's, like, at 800%, is it going to remain that? Or is, still gonna, or is it still going to be treated like a normal force time <coughs> where after... Uh, after the actions on the fourth time is gone, like that's pretty much it. Or because we don't have the the uh, the the character who activated that fourth time, like will the fourth time or will the HP damage bonus increase? 
uh, since that character is not currently on the on the screen. So I'm wondering how exactly that's going to work, but I, I'm going to assume that we'll still be able to increase the force gauge, but we'll have to wait and see until uh, the event drops. Uh, 1000 Ultimate Coloring Brilliance will be awarded for just clearing the fight and another 1000 for perfecting the fight. A permanent mission to complete the fight with a certain number of parties and within a certain number of turns will be available, which also rewards Ultimate Coloring Brilliance. And then Irvine is going to be receiving his FR, FR boards, BT, uh, Force Level 50, and a rework. Now, speaking of Irvine, his uh, FR ability, Thundershot, with Rex as his partner. It's a range AoE Brave plus an HP attack and inflicts the range resist down to all enemies. Uh, when it comes to the Force Conditions, whenever a turn passes selecting a range attack command, and whenever a turn passes with a character dealing an attack type weakness damage which pretty much Irvine is able to provide that if you pair him up with range units. Uh, his uh, BT ability quick shot it's a range AoE Bray plus an HP attack. The BT effect the party whenever you are using a range attack the brave damage becomes maximum brave damage. Oh okay okay that's pretty <coughs> that's pretty cool <coughs> excuse me uh, the party is also going to be getting uh, Brave Damage Up, Brave Damage Cap Up, HP Damage Up, HP Damage Cap Up, and then Damage Up and Damage Cap Up effects increase further when using a range attack command. That's pretty cool. Uh, because like there, we actually do have a good number of ranged units right now in JP who has gotten some really good upgrades as of late. So having Irvine as a strong utility or like uh, as a, a strong third slot character with other range units uh, is actually uh, pretty good. Or just like units that have like range uh, attack commands is actually uh, really, really good. And depending on uh, how like the percentages to the damage up and damage cap up, uh, I mean, I mean, it could potentially be very, very strong. But, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. I am. Uh, I'm sick. Uh, the Memorial Battle Start campaign, uh, it begins on the 16th of May, uh, before me, before the, um, uh, Memorial Battle to help prepare with its banner starting on the 19th. A special chocobo panel will be added that rewards 84 stone shards and four high power pieces. During the campaign, players will not have to use gems to change fights for the crystal quest. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Laguna is going to be getting uh, his FR weapon. Laguna and Renoa are going to be receiving FR boards, force level 50, and a rework. Uh, Laguna's uh, FR weapon, uh, his FR ability, excuse me, is going to be Gunner Beat with Vincent as his partner. It's a ranged AoE Bray plus an HP attack. It inflicts the attack down, defense down, and speed down to all enemies. Uh, when it comes to the force conditions, whenever a turn passes with a character selecting an attack command based on the number of debuffs on the enemy, and the other one being uh, when a turn passes with a character dealing brave damage to all enemies. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, uh, some pretty uh, simple debuffs. I mean debuffs. Some pretty simple uh, conditions when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, Laguna's uh, uh, force ability, especially because like Laguna already uh, inflicts uh, the the uh, the the enemies with uh, with debuffs uh, with with his skills, so that's not going to be an issue for him. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much going to be it for uh, for the translation video. Uh, I am excited for Kadash because you, you guys already know I am a, f a big Final Fantasy VII uh, fan, uh, so definitely excited for that. I am actually also curious about Irvine's BT, uh, especially because I do have a good amount of ranged units built, maxed out, and everything. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I am really curious about the damage up and the damage cap up effects uh, whenever you are using a range attack command. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see what's going on with that. But uh, other than that, though, guys, this is gonna be it for the video. Let me know what you, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.